There's one thing I would love to do, and that is um, present on behalf of the Cello Society and on behalf of all cellists, I should say all string players, but today is a cello day, an award to a man who is completely unique in the world of string instruments. I mean, I can't think of anybody really in any field who has the authority that Charles Beer has. If Charles Beer decides that an, or says that an, an instrument is by Grafrilla, for instance, then an instrument that might for a hundred years have been thinking of itself as an Amati is a Grafrilla. And he's got such knowledge, such expertise that people just don't question him. He, he's amazing. People can take an instrument to him and he say, oh yes, I saw that 35 years ago in an auction. It's uncanny. Last month I was in Kronberg in Germany and I was just leaving. I was being driven somewhere in quite a hurry and suddenly I heard a puffing and panting outside the car and I looked and there was Heinrich Schiff and he said, Stephen, I hear you're presenting an award to Charles Beer. And I said, yes, I am. He said, oh, well, please tell him that Please say, I'm very sad, I cannot be there tonight, but I thank him more than I can ever say, and I thank him for many centuries of friendship. That's what he said, <laughs> which I thought was a cute line. Anyway, I won't give you, you can look up Wikipedia, what Charles has done with his life, but as I say, he is a figure to whom so many of us owe so much. There's nobody like him, I say, in the instrument world, there's nobody like him in the music world. And it gives me more pleasure than I can say to present him this award. Up you come, like it or not, Charles. We rehearsed um, this moment with emails, and um, I was threatened with all kinds of um, revelations and bad things generally. <laughs> and um, so it's even more embarrassing to, um, than I thought it was going to be to sit here and, <laughs> and say all of that. But first of all, I'd like to say uh, how, what a, a huge pleasure it is to be here with so many cellists in the Duke's Hall, which I know well. And I haven't realised that the London Cello Society was already ten years old. It seems, at my age, it seems like about three. And um, so it, it's, it's been a wonderful evening hearing these great artists playing these great Stradivari cellos. Um, the, the, one of the great things about Stradivari is that he never liked to make the same instrument twice. And he did indeed, as I think it says in the catalogue, um, have a huge lot of fun with trying to get the perfect cello. And, um, and I think he succeeded. But um, the, the thing about cellists is that I've always thought, um, well, I had, I had a, a great musical education. It'll take me about 40 seconds to tell you, so I'll waste that amount of time. Um, I was at prep school where we had a violinist who was probably about grade four and, and a pianist who was possibly grade five. Um, and uh, that was it. There was no more music than that. I was told that at a special request from Mr. Beer Senior, uh, I was to have some lessons on the violin. And uh, my teacher was usually to be found in, in the pub around the corner when he didn't turn up for lessons. But we didn't really get on. And at the end of a term, uh, I could actually tune the violin, but not in tune. <laughs> um, and uh, so I was relegated to the viola for the next term. Ooh. And, um, Ooh. Yeah. And uh, it was, when I went to Mittenwald, which is where I learned to originally to make violins, um, the, I was told I had to have violin lessons. They didn't have a cellist there, so it had to be violin. And I went for my first lesson. He only spoke German, and I spoke a bit of German. And he said, um, also spiele mal vor, pointing at a piece of music. And I said, but I can't read music. And he said, well, that's all right, just play it. 
<laughs> and uh, I said, but I really, really can't. How does it go? And it was the violin entry in the first movement of the Brahms double concerto. <laughs> So at that point, I more or less gave up until I arrived in New York to learn about restoration. And um, my boss there, very sneakily, um, got Maurice Bialkin, who was a very fine cellist, um, to give me some lessons. And on about the third one, I said, you, know, you must tell me uh, how much this is costing. And he said, no, 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 it's all free. Don't worry, don't worry. So that's when I knew my boss was, um, I mean, I always knew he was the sort of person who would cheat like that, but I knew he was paying for my lessons. So I'm afraid I gave up the cello at that point and, and came back. And, um, which is why there were so many... Well, anyway, there we are. Um, the, th the thing about cellists that's always struck me, compared with violinists, is very simple just to say, can you imagine this room being full of violinists, mm -hmm. all friends and all having a good time? <laughs> I think they're much more individually competitive than cellists. Um, and um, I saw that in Manchester at those cello festivals that Ralph Kirschbaum uh, used to, well, he introduced them and kept them going. And um, he's a wonderful friend and a wonderful cello, cellist. And um, I wish he was still here, but we seem to have lost him, at least for the moment. But he was, um, he, I had a falling out with Tortelier because of him. Um, because he used to be a very good, uh, on the telephone, he used to be all kinds of different people. And uh, two or three times he called me up and he, he did a French voice and said, it's Paul Tortelier here, is that Mr. Beer? <laughs> and I got used to these and then one day uh, comes Ralph again and I said, no, you are not Monsieur Tortelier, you are Mr. Cashbaum. And, um, and we went on like this for a minute or two, and then my heart sank. <laughs> now look, we have a viola chopping board I love for it. you. <laughs> uh, you can chop as many violas as you like. Um, we also have a book for you, which I think is... is it's a children's book, I think, so you'll, 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 you'll love it. Did you write it? <laughs> and, not this one, then. And you have your own unique certificate. Wow. London Chalice, a Lifetime Achievement Award, Charles Beer, for his long and distinguished services to the cello community in London. And his life as a sex symbol in the music world. <laughs> so, 